Thought I'd make a little video of the BLM admin site out here at Eagle. So this is the uh, airstrip. It's about a mile and a half out of town. And we're close to it, so it makes it nice. So you can just walk over to the admin site, which is here. And we have, of course, first is a vault toilet. Do your business. And there's some kind of, I'm not sure what this building is. I see the maintenance guy uh, come over once in a while, get some tools and stuff out of there. And I think there's also some radio equipment in there. I've never seen anybody in that side of it. This is the uh, ATV. That I've been assigned to, to ride around and get back and forth to town. This is this little Hilton suite over here, as I call it. When Colin is not here, the BLM rec manager for the area, then I can have it. And I've got it in here with all my stuff in there. And every time you open the door, mosquitoes get in. Then you gotta get the bug zapper out and clear it out for the night. Over here, the, there's no well or anything. They actually truck the water in from Fairbanks. There's some big poly tanks in here, which are luckily are filled pretty well. This is the shower room. I haven't used it yet. There wasn't water last time I was here. You see, it's a full-size shower. You know, you gotta conserve water. Then this is the the main building here, where most people gather. There were three archaeologists, BLM archaeologists, and they've been here for a week working on a project, and they took off this morning. So this is the kitchen, Got a couple of refrigerators, keep all my stuff in that one. Um, and this is actually, that's the hot water heater, and there's a little RV pump that you can hear when it, just like in the travel trailer. And then uh, there's no TV, no internet. There is a phone line here. I use this desk a lot to do work. When I don't need to be plugged into anything, you have to go into town to get Wi-Fi, and I plug in at the uh, Yukon Charlie Park Service Visitor Center. And I can plug into our BLM network. It's incredibly slow. But we have uh, DVDs basically out here. Continuing on out the back door. Have a grill. I've never seen anybody using this area. It looks it'd be kind of cool if there wasn't so many mosquitoes out. Mosquitoes are getting pretty bad. Little fire ring. And then this is the bunkhouse, and then I stay in here if Colin's here in the other one. It's got a little screened off area. See some buildings and stuff over there. There's it's uh, Park Service. They store their a bunch of their junk over there. That's where I park the ATV when I'm done. And then this is the bunkhouse portion here. So one, two, three bunks in this room, and one, two, three, four, five, six in this one. And you could probably fit some more. I was told there might be some fire people. Um, Come through here and they stay here um, being by the airport too is convenient for them because a lot of them are you know taking helicopters and stuff you know. and then that's the road to town and I've seen moose on it that's more of the park service they've got a actually that's an aircraft hangar the law enforcement ranger for park service has a airplane in the hangar I've seen that before and there's various other maintenance buildings over that way for park service. I'm going to be here the next uh, week and a half. Administering a project on uh, Fort Edward.
Here's the plane landing in Eagle. <clears throat> it's Wednesday. Must be a little before 10 o'clock. It's a Cessna Caravan, single prop. The life line of this community. There's a road, but a lot of supplies come in, all the fresh supplies and stuff. A few skeeters out. Stu, I'm starting off day one of my hike. I just got dropped off at the road. If you look over that way, I think you can see the Taylor Highway. Go by on it. Got a ride out of Eagle. That's the trail I came in on. Actually, you can see it over there too. Nice weather today. Not too many bugs. And I'm going, I think, maybe that over there is Glacier Peak. Glacier Mountain. I'm not sure until I get up here. Hoping to make Wancott Mountain today. As the trail continues on that way. See not too many bugs. Nice weather. Supposed to rain tomorrow, Saturday. Pretty good. I just got my my trusty Mystery Ranch Selway. people brought my binos and my spotting scope I'm thinking maybe I should just pick one or the other because my pack feels heavy for four days I'm gonna go up and see if I can see some sheep I've heard reports of a big caribou herd in the area saw some moose tracks back on the trail um, haven't seen any bear sign luckily I'm hoping not to see any bears There's a helicopter over here you guys doing some drilling stuff. I don't know if it's for gold or for oil. Just heading down the, down the, this is the 40 mile country. A little caribou. You can see that, right? just about over the edge. Another caribou. I think that might be one caught mountain. I hope it is in the background there. Not past there. There's a few scattered caribou out around here. So I'm gonna take off over that way. Okay, day two. Two of my hike, my weekend hike into 40 mile country. It started raining early this morning. Just a little seek outside. A little slope to the camping spot, but it's the best I could do. I was pretty exhausted when I got here yesterday. Just getting ready to go down and have some breakfast. I saw I came from over there that clouded mountaintop over the top of that one and down and around I uh, scouting for sheep 
try to get to Glacier Mountain and just see what the trail is like and pretty much there is no trail for most of the way and you're just bushwhacking and there's some parts where it's eight ten feet tall of jungle of willow and I came down through there and cut down right by that big rock knob and there's good trail along there there's big you can I don't know if you can see the like caribou migration route pretty much just following caribou trails looks like a big herd came through not too long ago I saw a couple scrawny ones over there down below that mountain in that big plain and then this was really hard to get up here through any place there's spruce there's a lot of brush and into jungle and it's really hard to get through there with a full pack and then I spotted you can't see it from here but right down past that brush in this opening where it's kind of lush I thought oh maybe there'll be water there that was another problem I pretty much had to drink out of a, a filter anyways out of a caribou hoof <laughs> and fill up my water bottles over there so I was coming over here looking for a spot to camp and we can just barely see a little bit of the white right right there from there's a chunk of snow and uh, last night I had to melt that to fill up my water bottles and have dinner and actually there was a nice bull caribou who was resting on the top of the snowbank when I came down to and he took off and went around the corner there and then uh, that tree up there with the crook in it it's pretty ideal for throwing a rope over and storing my food up there because it's this bear country I've been Caution that there's some big bears up here. I am armed. But, and then, well, the clouds came in. You can't even see it now. At Wanakot Mountain is up there. I think after breakfast, I'm going to take a little hike. Stick to these caribou trails. The going should get a little easier now. And just since I'm here, I'm going to go up there. I'm probably going to cut the day short and come out Sunday night. I got my sat phone. I got my spot. Checked in with Connie last night. She's in Anchorage. But, uh, yeah, the seek outside shelter is so far holding up good. It's just a little light rain. Stu signing off from the 40 mile country. There's a routine for cooking here is scrape the dirt off the top of a snowbank here. And then boil it down. You get about a third of a cup for every cup of snow here. And you can have some oatmeal and a cup of coffee. I think this is pretty clean. I'm not filtering it and not bringing all of it to a boil. It was actually kind of nice yesterday having some cold water. But looks like a a lot of caribou had headed out and they were headed over that way or maybe up that way. Maybe I'll see them this morning if I hike up there. The rain's letting up, luckily. So I think I will hike on up the trail after breakfast. Forgot to look and see what time it is. I started off a little before 8. And I'm gonna saw a place I could probably scrounge some water if I needed to. Seat the caribou have been running through. I don't know if I'm going to find anything up here. I got enough water to make it up there and back. I'm planning to go back to my tent tonight. Just make a day hike of it and then hike out tomorrow on Sunday morning. Hoping the clouds clear off. It's supposed to be nice on Sunday. Kind of dry everything out maybe before I pack up. Hopefully I can get out on the satellite phone. Let my ride know to pick me up a day early. Otherwise I told him Monday night. Yeah, it's getting a little, little slope to it, but it's a lot easier walking. It's open country now, up this high. I'm just hoping it, uh, it clears up and I can get some views. It's like walking in a cloud. I haven't seen any other caribou this morning. Just saw a lot of tracks. I think the herd moved through back farther. I'm not really that interested in caribou anyways. Anyway, we're starting off for now. Here's a mama termigan. I bet you it's a mama. And she's sticking around. The babies are probably... Yep, there's one. Pretty 
pretty big one. I saw a flock yesterday, a mama with about 20 babies, and they were just tiny. That one's big. You see if you have one that gets big. Oh, it's kind of brown. Targon's up here are small. back up behind me. Just coming down they spot it out. I'm seeing a lot of caribou sign. I'm kind of surprised I haven't seen more actual animals. I think they passed through a couple days ago. The fog just lifted and wow look at this country up here. saddle here where you can just see where hundreds and hundreds of caribou have come through off that hillside just tore it up and over there too in the distance. Yeah, this is Stu on, I guess you'd say the morning of day three. It's 2 a.m. I woken up, I heard this wolf howling. Sounded like it was right over there, so I guess I figured I'd do a little business anyways. And, and it uh, ran by on that little ridge right over there, so it's like right up over there in the brush right now. He hasn't come this way. I had the spotting scope handy and had a real good look at him right right over there. Right on that trail there. Right on up in that brush and disappeared. Big sucker. Big. It's the first wolf I've ever seen. And oh shit, there's another one. Yesterday. Oh shit, that's a big bear. Big brown bear. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to bed now. Hope that wolf's out over that way now. Okay, I 
Got a bear on one side of me and a wolf on the other. I'm not liking this at all. I'm gonna start packing up. I'm not gonna go back to sleep.